So first things first, before you cut, I do that differently. Everyone kind of does that however they're comfortable. So don't, you can do your honing down on the board like this. Some people can work towards themselves. I think that's weird. I just kind of hold it like that. You can line your angle is roughly, let's see if I can find that. If you set your knife against the handle and hold that, that's roughly what you're looking for. So I just kind of hold it away from me and work downwards. Now it feels nice and sharp. This is by no means a special knife, but if you take care of it, it doesn't matter. So when I'm cutting an onion, and this is going to apply to almost everything that you cut, uh, this is the number one cut to know. Once you get it comfortable doing this, everything else is going to be fairly easy and straightforward. So first rule is you're going to take your knife, you're going to do a pinch grip. Let's put your thumb on one side. If you're right-handed, it's going to look like this. That might be easier for you to see. Thumb on one side of the blade, index finger on the other, and then your back three fingers go on the handle. So I'm left-handed, I don't want to actually do that. It's not going to be stable, or as stable, be stable. I can do it just really slow. So, and one of the things about onions is some people say, don't cut the root end off. That's where you get the crying eyes. Some people say, specifically Nathan Merville, who is Stephen Hawking's apprentice, cut it with a sharp knife. Well, and also uh, Hervé Teeth. But anyways, cut it with a sharp knife. When you smash the onion, you mix down two chemicals together, and the reaction is the thing that causes your eyes to to cry. So um, stick with a sharp knife, and you'll work faster with a sharp knife as the other side of it, so you won't be spending as much time around the, the volatile onion compounds. So I don't really care about not cutting the bottom off. I do it all the time. So what I do is I'll top the onion, Take the bottom of the onion off, like so. And one other point is you don't want to be scraping your knife blade down on the board like this when you're working. Sometimes you'll see me turn it over and go backwards to scrape. This rolls the blade and that makes it dulls the knife. So you just don't want to do that anymore. It's gonna you're gonna kind of instinctively do it when you're working, but try to not actually drag on the board. Now I just cut the onion in half. This is generally good. Almost never do you need to keep an onion whole. There's not really a lot of reason for doing whole rounds of onion other than that you think that they're nice on like a burger or a sandwich or something. But even then, if you do a proper julienne, which would just be taking your half onion like this and slicing like this, if you cut them nice and thin, guys, see that's almost see-through. That's going to be fine on a sandwich. But, so that's a julienne. But what I'm really going to do is for dicing. And I'm lazy, so I find if I take the bottom of the onion off, and you want the root side down, that's kind of holds it together. I just bring my knife into the onion about like that. I'll do two cuts like that. A lot of people do it down on the board, but I find that to be just a little bit awkward, so I don't do that. Now that I've got my downward cuts, this is the root end again. I'm going to cut the size of my dice, almost, but not quite to the root. That way it still kind of holds together. And then, now we've got two cuts. One goes this way, and one goes this way, right? So when we come this way, we're going to get dice. And what you want to do is get your pinch grip going and then you have your claw so you just want to make sure that your thumb is always behind your index finger if it sticks out like this you're gonna chop off the tip of it it's not gonna be that good of a day uh, so and then you're bending these so ideally let's see if I can see this you have your knuckle right and your knuckle is the guide and you can use both of them if you're doing something really big or just one of them if you're working kind of finely. So that's going to be your guide. So remember, your thumb is behind your index finger, even though I'm kind of holding like this. 
these fingers are behind your middle finger. So if you're doing like a bunch of something, you kind of like pinch the back of the bunch and then you have your guide fingers up here to kind of do like uh, if you're doing like really fine herbs or something like that. So pinching what you're cutting so that it doesn't move. And then cut just like that. And then when I get to the back of it, I lay it down flat, cut it, and then cut the dice because that held everything together while I was cutting so I don't have to worry about about it falling apart. So pretty small, these are quarter inch. All right, next half, same thing, standing it on the root end, cut down twice. And that's it. So, practice makes perfect. It doesn't take that long to cut an onion. Three onions, that's it. It's gonna make a big batch of stew. Okay, how to cut celery. Obviously first, clean it up and wash it. Then I like to take off the ugly brown tops and get rid of them. After that, this guy doesn't look so great, so I'm probably not gonna use him. Uh, you got these big ones, and then the center ones always have like a bunch of leaves and stuff. The leaves are not ideal for your brunoise or for your mirepoix, um, but you can chop those finely and throw them in with all your herbs at the end of whatever you're doing, and that's a good use for them. So first thing with the big ones is I cut them generally in half. This is about five inches long, maybe, you know, four and a half to five inches. So I have easy to work with pieces. The longer it is, the harder it is to work. And then you just take your little crowns, cut it a couple times. We're going to make match sticks out of them. This is a whole bunch of celery. And we're going to cut it to quarter inch dice because you have to see it's not that hard. It takes very little time to cut celery. And once you know how to do carrots, celery, and onion, You'll be able to figure out almost anything. Potatoes are similar to onions, but a little bit different. Uh, but you can you can approach them the same way. You'll you'll figure it out. So here we go. It's been almost uh, 30 seconds of cutting so far. Okay, now I got a little pile. I always think of it like a log pile, but now I can take a bite of that pile, right? And just quickly cut it into dice. Takes about no time. I've got my brunoise or mirepoix. I always I'm saying that today. My mirepoix bowl. This is probably slightly too big of a amount, but not super concerned with getting perfect dice. I don't find like perfect dice obviously is better than imperfect dice because it's going to cook more consistently, but the world is not going to end if you get a couple big pieces. Of course, if you do it in front of a chef, uh, then your world might end because we aren't always very nice because we want to make you better. And being nice isn't a good way to do it. There, that's a whole bunch of celery. Easy. Okay, carrots. Uh, so when I do carrots, first things, I peel them. This is going to be about two and a half pounds of carrots. 
maybe even three. Then I take off the heads and the tips. Where the, the actual root starts coming out of the tap root isn't really that uh, desirable to eat, so the tops have dirt in them, and where the root starts, generally just is kind of flavorless and not that great. So take off a little bit of both sides, and then depending on the links, we're gonna cut them, try to keep this a little bit clear, cut them into convenient working sizes. So I feel like carrots are probably the most finicky thing to do a dice on. Um, they're a little bit time consuming, but working with smaller pieces is going to significantly, it's going to make it more manageable, if nothing else. The reason that they're so finicky is that they are, you know, they're round, but they're not consistently shaped. They're never perfectly shaped. And so they move around a ton and they make a mess. So the best thing to do with them is cut them in half, give yourself a flat surface, and then you can quarter them again, like so. And then what we have once we've done that is the julienne or a matchstick which it's a little bit big, but I'm fine with that because I'm not trying to do anything super fancy. We're just trying to do carrots nice and easily. So that's too much. Don't, don't bite too much. It'll just make your life harder.